I said I didn't think he should get involved in this. He did as president because he likes this culture war. He thinks it's a good culture war to fight. He thinks he wins this culture war. And he's likely right. He does win this culture war, but at the cost of polarizing the debate a little bit more. When President Trump took office, some 75% of Americans thought kneeling for the national anthem was bad. Now that number is in the low 60s. Last time I checked, a lot of that has to do with President Trump's polarizing personality. With all of that said, the media have latched on to the national anthem controversy, and they have not let go since. The NFL has done a horrible job of killing the controversy instead of just killing it at the outset by saying, listen, you don't get to kneel for the anthem, you're fine. You want to protest on, in, your off, in your off hours, enjoy, but you don't get to do it on our fields. Instead of them doing that, they allowed it to happen, they allowed it to fester, and it ended up hurting the NFL in a pretty serious way. The ratings for the NFL have been in decline for the last two years. It's been a serious image issue for the NFL. Well, now Nike is jumping into the fray. So Nike decided that they are going to do the, the, this, this huge ad campaign that is going to focus on Colin Kaepernick. He is part of the 30th anniversary of Nike's Just Do It campaign. And here is what the ad looks like. It's a picture of Colin Kaepernick, a close-up of his face in black and white. It says, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. And then there's the Nike swoosh and it says, just do it. Okay, so there's so many elements of this that are just fabulously ironic. First of all, this social justice warrior campaign to sell sneakers produced by small children in Vietnam, presumably, is kind of hilarious. Watching the entire left resonate around a huge billion dollar company, a huge corporation that allegedly exploits child labor in third world countries because, hey, Colin Kaepernick, that's pretty hilarious. It is also kind of hilarious that the slogan itself, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything, it's a really dumb slogan. In fact, it's basically Thanos' slogan from Avengers Infinity Wars. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing half of humanity. What you believe is actually the key issue. I mean, if we're actually going to take that slogan seriously, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything, it's not about believing in something. It's about what you believe in. The question is, are you believing the right things? Colin Kaepernick is not. He's never provided a shred of data to support his assertions that black people in the United States are being disproportionately shot by police because, in fact, they are not. And then we get to the actual issue of Colin Kaepernick being the face of this particular culture war. We get to the, the bottom line here. And there's a great irony to it, which I'll discuss in just a second. So Colin Kaepernick, again, says, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything over his face for the Nike Just Do It campaign. I do love the fact that when you hashtag Just Do It with all the capitals properly utilized, it looks like Just Dolt. Um, but in any case, using Colin Kaepernick, he's a poor example of this because he didn't sacrifice anything. Colin Kaepernick did not sacrifice a thing. If we're going to talk about people who sacrificed in the NFL, there are legitimate former military members in the NFL. You know, Pat Tillman died in the line of duty, work, you know, as, a, as a soldier in, in Afghanistan for the NFL. Did, did Nike do a campaign around him? Of course they didn't, right? They, they just do it around, around Colin Kaepernick. And this is for capitalistic reasons. It is to make money. Nike is a corporation. They know we'll be talking about it today. They hope that by, by right-wingers talking about it, they will drive more people on the left to go out and buy sneakers on the basis of we don't like President Trump. And let's be frank about this. This is an anti-Trump campaign. This rally first started in the 2016 campaign. If Hillary Clinton were president right now, do you think that Nike would actually be running this ad campaign? Of course not. Of course not. Colin Kaepernick has not sacrificed anything. Not only did he not sacrifice nothing, he only started doing this when he became a useless backup quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. And then after that, he has kept his name in the headlines. He's been on the cover of Sports Illustrated despite not playing for two years. Yeah, Tim Tebow isn't on the cover of Sports Illustrated every two weeks because Tim Tebow isn't in with the social justice warrior crowd. But Tim Tebow was in many ways sort of the equivalent of Colin Kaepernick in that he had one kind of terrific season where he unexpectedly led the Denver Broncos to wins in the playoffs, and then he fell off the map. But Colin Kaepernick, you know, he, he took over for Alex Smith halfway through a season with the San Francisco 49ers. They went to the Super Bowl. He lost, and then he was nothing. Okay, and, but, but still, he's on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He's still champion as this, this thought leader, even though I'm not sure Colin Kaepernick has ever had any real thought. And the reason I say that is because Colin Kaepernick has never made an articulate defense of his own position on any of this stuff. There are people who have made articulate defenses on his behalf, but he's never done it himself. He has not sacrificed anything, and he's slated to earn legitimately millions of dollars. He's going to get a branded line off of not being in athletics for two years. He's getting a branded line, and he is going to get, and he's going to make millions of dollars off of kneeling for the national anthem. So why is Nike doing all of this? 
precisely so that we'll talk about it. It is a troll. It's obviously a troll. They're hoping that the president of the United States sounds off about it. Trump undoubtedly will sign off on it. I mean, he will undoubtedly sound off about it on Twitter because he thinks, again, that this is a culture war worth fighting. But there's no question that this is all designed to sell more sneakers. And one of the reasons that Nike thinks that they can get away with this, obviously, is because disproportionate amounts of money are spent on clothing and apparel by members of the black community, many of whom are supporters of Colin Kaepernick in this particular controversy. Okay, that is not a racial supposition. That is an economic supposition. Economist Kerwin Charles Eric Hurst Nikolai Rusinov from University of Chicago did a study called Conspicuous Consumption and Race. And what they found is that blacks and Hispanics spend a lot more than whites with, com with comparable incomes on visible goods, meaning clothes, cars, and jewelry, up to an additional 30%. There's been a, a long-standing long sort of sociological investigation into why, for example, it seems that lower-income black folks spend more on sneakers. And some of that has to do with, with pride and culture. Some of that has to do with the fact that, you know, like Air Jordans were a, a massive cultural totem in the 1990s. All of that is true. But just for capitalistic purposes, it's pretty obvious that Nike is attempting to appeal to this particular consumer base, along with a left that will resonate to the support of Colin Kaepernick. And it's also important to note that according to Nielsen, African-Americans are more likely to interact with brands on social media or to use social networks to support companies and brands, 44% more likely. So they're hoping that this campaign goes viral, particularly among black audiences, and that people on the left will resonate to this as well. So in the end, capitalism wins. The great irony of this is that the social justice warriors championing this, they're really championing the power of capitalism. But is it insulting? Of course it's insulting. Is it designed to slap President Trump? Of course it's designed to slap President Trump. And honestly, I'm not sure that President Trump could ask for much more. Nike made an in-kind contribution to the Trump campaign. Because if this battle in 2018 and 2020 is going to be about kneeling for the flag, most Americans are not on board with that. Most Americans don't look at Colin Kaepernick and see an American hero. They don't even see a guy who's made a lot of sacrifices. Muhammad Ali was the champion of the world. He was the heavyweight boxing champion of the world when he was suspended from boxing for not volunteering for the Vietnam draft, for not being drafted, and for saying things about the Viet Cong and all of this kind of stuff under the influence of, of Elijah Muhammad and the evil nation of Islam. But at least he sacrificed something. Or the guy sacrificed years of his career. He went to jail for this. Colin Kaepernick has sacrificed zero things, but apparently sacrificing everything means signing contracts worth millions of dollars in order to promote, promote a quote-unquote globalist brand that is selling sneakers made at half price off by child labor. So that's, that's exciting stuff. 